Okay, so the question of how often should we vaccinate any animal in general? It depends on the disease. Okay, so um, even right now, the vaccine companies for the three core viruses like this temple hepatitis four virus, they're actually licensed for three years. So that is what they recommend vaccinating every three years. Okay, um, things like leptospirosis, uh, the bacteria, not the virus, it's usually every year. So there lies the difference. Duration of immunity depends on the individual as well. So um, as we know, it's some disease, uh, it all depends on the individual. If the, if the individual is immunocompromised, then the need for vaccination may increase. How vaccination works is that the substance or the vaccine is injected into the animal and the animal mounts a response to it. Okay, so for say distemper hepatitis and power virus, they mount a response and they stay, the memory cells still stay present in those cases up to three years uh, as recommended by the vaccination company, which is why they only recommend vaccination every three years uh, because after uh, uh, they've shown that there is enough memory cells inside there should the animal contract the disease or be challenged with that particular condition, the memory cells are present enough to hold it at bay. Whereas our leptospirosis is a bacteria, so the memory cells isn't that good. Uh, hence, we vaccinate uh, leptospirosis on a yearly basis, just because purely the, immun the immunity, because it is a bacteria and not a virus, just simply does not last. Uh, same for kennel cough as well. So uh, vaccination for kennel cough is recommended for every year. Immunity is not lifelong. So there's been various sort of talks whether a one-off vaccine when they're puppies is just gonna last forever. We can't really show that, we can't really prove that, and certainly with evidence, it, so, it shows that uh, it's certainly not lifelong. They do uh, wane off after some time. The memory cells do sort of uh, uh, go down and not have that problem. So to be safe, vaccine companies, they quote a minimum duration, not a maximum. So this is where the difference is, okay? so. For vaccine companies, they quote a minimum duration, not the maximum. Whereas for the guidelines of WSAVA, they're talking about how long can we get away without doing it. A good analogy would be, without something random, tire changing. How often do we change our tires? Okay, so when we know when we have a brand new tire fixed onto your car, the rubber is at the thickest. Okay, which means that it is probably the safest. Your car is less likely to get punctured or um, you know, uh, or be punctured uh, running over a, a short nail or anything like that, okay? But how often do you change the tires? So some owners, uh, they change it whenever they think that it is worn down a little bit, okay? And some owners wait to the minimum legal requirement before they change it. So it's still talking about changing tires, but you can see by the approach and the objective of each tire changing, the approach changes. Okay, because if you really want to be extremely safe, you always want to have the thickest tire ever, which means that you should change it very, very often. If you just want to get by with the minimum requirement just to drive your car and not too concerned about safety, you want to stretch the interval of tire changing to say save money or just to make your tire last as long as possible. Does it make sense? Yeah. Um, so annual vet visits also allow for full health assessment as well as an opportunity to top up immunity with vaccination if necessary. So this is quite, uh, for me, it is quite important. Even if you're not talking about vaccinations, um, animals should be seen regularly really, if not twice a year, similar to our dentist, just for a vet check. Um, and certainly having vaccination does allow uh, owner to be more sort of a proactive in bringing the animals in. Okay, so we're going to discuss, uh, do we need to vaccinate our senior pets? Um, some people, they've asked a question, uh, you know, I've had my uh, pet vaccinated since it was a puppy for the past 7, 8, 10 years, even 12 years. Now, you know, it's 13, 14 years old. Do we need to keep on vaccinating it? Do they, would they have built up an immunity over all this time to uh, resist all the different uh, infections that we are vaccinating against? So. Some owners, they do misguidedly believe that vaccination in senior pets is not necessary. So it is a, it is a tricky question, okay, but nonetheless, a, it, it does have its own various uh, beliefs and, and I'm just going to share with you some of our understanding in vaccinating senior pets. 
Research suggests that senior pets have a less effective immune system than younger pets. So it's just like, for example, when we get older, uh, we always talk about uh, older people, you know, in six, uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, they can potentially be a little bit more vulnerable to sort of uh, diseases that uh, a younger uh, person with more robust um, immune system uh, may be uh, sort of uh, stronger against. Uh, we have all heard of people or older people who go into the hospital and contract uh, all sorts of different diseases from the different condition that they were originally uh, admitted for. So if we sort of think of that in that sort of context, then we can potentially argue that say that uh, because they are older, sometimes the immune system isn't as strong. Um, due to various reasons, if there's an underlying condition or whether uh, there's uh, organ issues and things like that really. So you can sort of extra extrapolate that sort of um, reasons to pets as well. Um, certainly this is not a blanket uh, sort of a statement for all older people or older pets because certainly there's some individual who are um, very, very healthy and very strong and it's not necessarily that all older animals or people would have a necessarily a weaker immune system. But nonetheless, to say that they um, have a stronger immune system because they're older, that well could be a little bit misguided really. If the lifestyle changes, so it's quite different as well. So maybe it will reduce the number of diseases vaccinated against if the lifestyle for the individual has changed. Example, an elderly cat that does not go outside would not benefit from a feline leukemia virus, just like how an elderly dog that does his own little walks without meeting other sort of um, dogs of unknown vaccine origin would be less likely to get kennel cough and uh, certainly if they are not traveling overseas because they are older then certainly you know uh, things like rabies itself may not be necessary. There are a few sort of uh, vaccination concerns that people may have to say okay I've heard of things that can happen um, when an animal is vaccinated. So this is a practice uh, overview of a canine health. It's called a pooch study. It is a data from almost 4,000 dogs. It is commissioned by the Animal Health Trust uh, that has got no affiliation with any of the vaccine companies. So it's not as though they sell vaccines or anything like that. So we like to think that it is uh, as a sort of a fair as it potentially could be. So the conclusion from this particular pooch studies is that there is um, no association between recent vaccination and ill health in dogs. And they also could not find any associations between the number of vaccinations received and ill health in dogs. So talking about the first one, so no association between uh, recent vaccination and ill health in dogs. Just saying is that if there is a lot of uh, dogs that come in for vaccinations, the proportion of dogs that actually have a negative um, effect from the vaccination is not significantly um, obvious to say that vaccination is not good for dogs in the respect. Sure, certainly there will be indivi uh, individuals that may have a sort of a, um, had side effects from the vaccinations, but it's not unlike um, somebody eating peanuts to say that, uh, you know, just because a person has got adverse reactions to peanuts doesn't mean peanuts itself is poisonous and is definitely going to cause an effect to all people. Uh, for the second statement to say no association between the number of vaccinations received, so they're saying that okay, not just one vaccination, let's swallow 10 vaccinations over 10 years. And they found no association between the number of vaccinations received and ill health in dogs as well. So a dog that is 12 years old that has received maybe 11 or 12 vaccinations is not in any more risk to be ill compared to a dog that's received less vaccinations or no vaccinations at all. So this is uh, the pooch study that they had from the Animal Health Trust. So, but are there actually reactions? So if you find in each vaccination pack, okay, there's always instructions to say that vaccination reactions are rare, but the most common reactions are mild and consist of vaccine-related injection lumps, fevers, and loss of appetite. So firstly, it is fairly important for us to be vaccinating healthy animals to start off with in the first place, which is why you tend to always have a vet check rather than just randomly vaccinating a dog, especially if it's not well, okay? 
Um, having said that, even in the most sort of healthy animals, there is a potential a reaction that may happen. So when we say something is rare, usually it's sort of a one in a thousand, okay? Uh, and the most common reactions are mild and consist of vaccine-related um, uh, symptoms, as what's written over there, not unlike a child vaccine. So serious um, reactions are very rare, but may consist of allergic anaphylactic reactions and autoimmune conditions. So when they say something is very rare, we're talking about one in 10,000, okay? Uh, but they may uh, sort of consist of those slightly more serious um, clinical signs. So the suspected adverse reaction incidence is 0.004%, which means that we're talking about, you know, a, th a, a sort of 10,000 animals, uh, maybe four of them would have a reaction to vaccination. So in many cases, the benefit of protecting your pet from those life-threatening infections far outweighs the risk of adverse reactions. It is quite important to understand that the choice of vaccination lies with the pet owner yourself so any sort of vaccination any sort of medication in general we always want to have a benefit risk analysis ratio what is the benefits i'm getting out of this and what is the risk that potentially happen that sounds pretty much in what we do in life whatever choice we make we want to weigh the pro we want to weigh the pros and cons so that is uh, one of those things whereby it is the owner's responsibility to um, Make sure that you know exactly what you're doing and why you're doing it and accept the risk that's involved. But that is the sort of um, um, generalized advice that most vets would give to say that the benefit of protecting your pet from life-threatening infectious um, far outweighs the risk of the adverse reactions considering that the adverse reactions is quite low. Not zero, but low.